Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the CSL. I'm Joe. I'm joined here today by a man who's normally behind the camera, but he's stepping out here to keep me company. Uh, as Fear Dragon was not able to be here tonight, it is Cheesehead Logic. How are you doing tonight? What are you talking about? Don't I look like Fear Dragon? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit more white, a, a solid beard, you know. We, we, we miss him, though. We do, we do miss him, though, uh, as well as also ZG. Hope she's uh, enjoying her time over in Europe right now. I actually had a chance to watch a little bit of Nation Wars today while I was just got, kind of getting around doing things. Really cool uh, organization this year, I want to say, like how they have it all set up. Very organized, very professional, very like high-level production, so it's a lot of fun. But uh, tonight, we got a really fun uh, CSL match, I think. A little bit of a curious one, too, as well, because you generally have a favored... I want to say Waterloo team with a very deep roster, a very flexible roster participating against a UC Riverside that's very limited in what they're capable of doing and who their favorite players are. And as we're starting up here in this uh, first game lobby, we have Buster versus Happy Tofu. And it's kind of interesting. I was looking at the lineups week after week after week after week for UC Riverside, and they were really consistent and predictable. And they had intense in the first hole. They had Happy Tofu always in the second slot, and then generally it would be 2v2, and then uh, depends who they have for their fourth player. But for the first time in their lineups today, they put Happy Tofu as their first player out, um, as a third player versus Sidious, and then uh, Amsmooth as the second player with intense all the way down in the fourth slot. That's kind of risky. That's kind of risky, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, you have to make it too intense to even have a chance here, I feel like. And you're definitely setting yourself up for some weirdness by not having them there. But maybe they're doing some kind of metagaming, or maybe it's something as simple as Intense having a late class. We might find out as these matches progress, but without further ado, let's get in. And spawning here in the bottom right-hand corner playing for Waterloo, it is the Red Terran player, Buster. Pretty good player. Um, overall record, if I'm not mistaken, by my own stats. He's got five and two record overall in the season, five and one versus Protoss. So at least fortunately for UC Riverside, they didn't <laughs> they didn't send a Protoss his way, and then um, only one loss against Zerg. So <clears throat> this is going to be a second match against Zerg of the season, and uh, he's obviously going to be playing against the Zerg located in the top left side of Catalyst, and that's going to be Happy Tofu. I like that little is that the little Carbot star right there? Yeah, I think that yeah, is the uh, Craft Stars, Starcrafts. But... Cute. <laughs> really cute. Um, hatch, uh, quick uh, already hatch thrown down right here by Happy Tofu. Meanwhile, Buster looks like he's just going to be opening up with the standard Reaper expand unless something magical pops up here. So very kind of nice calm opening that we typically see in the first games unless you have somebody like Print F playing then it just goes all to hell within the first few minutes. Um, so it's kind of nice to actually see a potentially slow-paced game. But as we know, Waterloo, pretty favored towards the mech style of play. They do have an influencer that they rely on uh, <laughs> for their play style and are big fans of a certain personality within the North American region. So um, I, wouldn't expect, I, I would expect eventually probably a nice little second gas coming up pretty soon from Buster and then eventually leading down that mech place although we've seen waterloo utilize a lot of the season what did you say yeah i think a lot of that is fair to say waterloo um they favor the mech style riddler i think is the only one that is kind of a hard always mech it happen uh, mm -hmm. the other two can be a bit more flexible buster I can play that mech style that the riddler likes i think um you know, the Riddler himself is, a lot of people say he's better than the real Avalo, and he plays on a, a ladder alt called Avalo, which I think can be a little bit funny from uh, from time to time here. But we do have that first Reaper coming out. Uh, might actually get a drone oh! here! Not worth, not worth. As a Terra player, I've been there before many times. You want to try to sneak out, you do some weird pathing clicking, you all of a sudden get yourself caught between a bunch of drones in a hard place. And sometimes, sometimes you almost try to bait that shot, especially when they're slowlings. And so you just try to hit that grenade as everybody surrounds you, and then just everybody pops up and you run away. But didn't work out that way, though. I like this. Happy Tofu, really, I don't want to say aggressive on the macro side, but already a pretty quick third hatch coming down for him here. Behind the speed, I would expect more queens. No, or Roach Warren. 
This is interesting. Off of a quick three hatch into Roach Warren, so he's hoping that he can produce whatever kind of attack uh, Buster might be sending him the other way. And usually with a lot of Terrans, that tends to be Hellion, Hellion, Hellbat aggression with Banshees on occasion, um, even some Medivac support. So Roaches, if he can get them out in time before he takes some damage, this could be a nice play for him. Uh, but now we'll get some Speedlings in here coming in. I'm gonna take a peek and look and see what's going on. Spots at low ground. Uh, supply Depot sees that there's a low ground CC. Hellions are going to come back and give themselves away too as well, but you know, not going to take a lot of damage over this, but at least he's getting a little bit of scouting and sees what's going on. Doesn't see that there's, you know, any obnoxious quick third or fourth gas coming down on the low ground. Um, so, you know, there's not going to be some fishy double banshee play or something really crazy going on for the time being. But how's your week been, man? Are you are you still out in the snow, in the snowy Appalachians of the east? No, I think our weather is finally wrapping up. Um, we did have hail yesterday morning, but it was warm enough by like lunchtime to melt it all and clear it out. So I think that's going to be uh, starting to wind down, thankfully. No more messages right before like, hey, if the stream goes out, I know there's a small chance that I'm losing power tonight. So just be aware of that. Uh, looks like Buster actually trying to make this Hellion run by Happen, going to be warming things up in the mineral line of Happy Tofu, but so far good defense with this uh, Roach Heavy Force is looking to be a bit aggressive here. Happy Tofu stepping out onto Catalyst, trying oh, to take advantage of the short rush. Look at this. Nice little uh, train coming across the map, and uh, he does at least have some Marines down on the low ground. Hellions are not going to be able to do too much here. Fortunately for him, he also has a Banshee coming out on the map, and that's going to really help with his defense. But that first onslaught with just one bunker, um, unless you could get some really nice repairs going, this is going to be a heavy amount of units coming across the map. The Ravager's forming too as well, so he's got that pot shot available to even do more damage than he's already done. But might be a minor mistake here, leading with the Lings first, going to lose all the Lings before he could get any actual damage done. And now here come the Roaches and the Ravagers. That bunker is living for the time being, getting mass repair at the moment while the Banshee gets a lot of damage done, hitting some of those Ravager shots on the SCVs to reduce the repair timer, but already such a great job from Buster defending this. Losing, you know, a few SCVs here and there that he can replace, but, you know, with low SCV, or sorry, low drone production and just three hatches, yeah, we see the GG coming out. Not a lot to fall back on, especially uh, after Buster's great defense right there. All right, so it looks like Buster going to put Waterloo in a 1-0 lead, holding that all in with uh, barely taking any SCV damage. It was just really well done. He pulled the SCVs at exactly the right time, had them pre-positioned to help minimize the amount of damage he took, and uh, really well done by uh, Buster. That's going to take us to our next 2v2, which is going to be taking place on East Watch here. And that game is going to be uh, Lock... And Ace Smooth. Am Smooth. Am Smooth. smooth. <laughs> so these guys are probably the least well known, I would say, players on both of these teams. So this could be kind of an interesting X Factor match. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say right now, <clears throat> it's super important for UC Riverside to win this if they want to have a chance at making it through. Because I think the next two, when you have uh, uh, the 2v2 with Buster again, who's a really good player. That's probably kind of favored towards Waterloo. Yeah, I'd have to tend to agree. And this is the risk always when you're putting out your ace player down at the fourth slot. You always risk losing uh, a potential 0-3, especially if a team like Waterloo gains momentum. The thing that people don't understand is Waterloo isn't obnoxiously deep for the StarCraft II collegiate scene compared to a lot of universities right now. Um, just counting their matches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different 1v1 players one two three four five six different 2v2 combos throughout the season so they have a lot of players that they can rely on they're very unpredictable you generally do know who their kind of ace and better players are but it is still hard to kind of get a good game plan going against them and they've really put out i feel like some of their best today with Sidis, aka buster they got lockout they got the riddler and they put out uh yenfu and Sidis, who have played at least a few 2v2s during the season so it's not a random assortment today either so yeah you're you're, you're completely correct this is a this is a risky spot and uh, this might really come down to this match right here uh, alone if, if they can set up maybe a potential future for themselves in this series all right, well, don't go anywhere, guys. We are going to be right back with our next match.
ladies and gentlemen. Hello and welcome back to the CSL. Uh, right now, Waterloo leads 1-0 to UC Riverside. They're looking set up through this lineup to be a bit dominant here, but this is going to be a TVT between a couple of interesting players here. Uh, <laughs> it looks like AM Smooth was kind of, I guess, teammates with Masa. That was an interesting conversation we got going yeah. down in the lobby. Yeah, ba back, back, back in the day, back <laughs> at, so, at some point. Yeah. Um, no, that's a, that's funny. A, a M smooth. That, that that sounds like I actually like that more than better than am smooth. Actually, it sounds like a like a former basketball player for the Lakers, like A C Green. It sounds really smooth. It comes off comes off smooth. The smooth player coming off smooth, but. Um, yeah, this is going to be, a, I feel like, a tough matchup for him. A uh, diamond player at the current moment, Locke, who's pretty much a GM, if I, as you mentioned. I'm not too mistaken on that either. So we'll see what happens here, though. TBT can be interesting, depending how you play it. Um, for somebody like Amso, he's going to have to probably either pull out some really tricky early game aggression or potentially play mech which on obviously might just work into uh the waterloo player side but um it might at least let him kind of be a little bit more elastic give him a little bit more of a chance than trying to keep up with a little bit of a higher level player in the macro game but we're in game here we go spawning here in the bottom left hand corner playing for uc riverside it is a m smooth nmx is that a team that's what he was saying. I think Masa used to be in that plan. I was about to say, I was like, huh. I, I, it looks familiar, but I'm not 100% sure if it's like a really still active plan. But over over in the top right, you guys uh, definitely know the I mean, NA little logo right there with the hat representing Waterloo. We got Mr. Locke. And uh, it looks like similar standard openers from both players. No crazy proxies, but hold on. What is Locke doing over here? Oh, never mind. Okay. He just threw down a little bit of a... Oh, he went gas first. I was about to say, what is going on right now? Yeah, he went gas first, so uh, good chance we'll see probably a quick factory. Even maybe looking... Uh, yep, got a quick double gas right here. So very fast uh, potential factory coming up. And with this SCV crossing the map, I don't think it's a scouting SCV. This could be for a proxy, uh, proxy factory, you think, maybe? I think you could be right about that. It's a super early SCV here uh, coming out onto the map potentially getting a good thing down, especially with that double gas, and we're not seeing it being spent on anything at home just yet. We won't really know exactly what he wants to do until we see that second building go down. Um, we will have to see. It does look like this SCV not going to be able to get up the ramp just yet. The wall is already up from AM Smooth, perhaps expecting a bit of shenanigans, but he's going to have to keep sniffing, sniffing things out. And with a Marine coming out here first, that might be a little tough. Uh, not going to be able to scout quite as efficiently as if he got that Reaper out. Yeah, no, this is uh, probably going to maybe surprise him like a tiny bit. He's got the factory back at home. He's got a Reaper coming across the map. But uh, don't be surprised if we're going to see some kind of uh, either quick Banshee or potentially quick Cyclone play on the side of Locke coming out here pretty quickly. It, Am Smooth looks pretty uh, good uh, at the moment. Joe, I had a question, though. Did you, did you happen to see the... Uh, the patch that came out for Brood War the other day? April, the, April, the Fool's, April Fool's Day, Day patch. Dragoons <laughs> can only turn... I forget if it was right or left. Dra 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 Dragoons can't turn left anymore or something like that. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> that stuck with me. I think the one of the comments on the Battle.net forums was I thought patches were supposed to change things. That gave me well, a chuckle. Well, well, look, I mean, every, every April Fool's, you get some, like, corny, you know, April Fool's, you know, patches or write-ups or jokes or pranks. Obviously, everybody knew it was April Fool's, but it was, like, really well-written. Like, the humor behind it was hilarious. I like the Goliaths. Like, if they walk on cliffs, they fall over now <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> They're so also always online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it does look like a Reaper going to be coming in here and actually getting uh, a whiff of that. I love how uh, AM Smooth had all those Marines yeah. spread out specifically to deny this scout, and uh, Locke just like got in. That's that's Reaper life though. Like every time I feel like I have it, like every zone locked down or get get a good zoning going. Nope, still like one or two Reapers just somehow manage to sneak by. All of a sudden I see my mineral line getting pinged. I'm just like, how the hell did that happen? But 
Here we go. We got a Liberator coming out here um, defensively, it looks like, for the most part. And then, obviously, you could use it on the aggressive side. But uh, just getting some high ground defense. Only the Hellion coming across the map to scout. We do have a CC coming down for AM Smooth at the Kermon behind us. So he's going to macro behind this Banshee. And so it'll be interesting to see what kind of damage he can possibly and maybe get done. Already with the turret coming down across the map and a Raven out, he will most likely have the necessary detection as well as with the Cyclone lock on. He'll have the capability to deny the Banshee probably completely so. Um, this is, this is you know, just going to be all up to control and not over committing. But, oh, oh, look at what's coming over to AM Smooth's base. Yeah, here comes that Liberator and not a lot of anti-air. There are a few Marines here. Um, and they can get behind that Liberator and kind of just chip away at its dead zones and eventually clean it up. But look at all this denied mining time. Keep in mind, only one CC. Those SCVs aren't even being transferred. I think you're going to absolutely be happy getting three SCVs and uh, about a solid 30 seconds of denied mining time with that Liberator. Absolutely, yeah. Unless he values gas really heavily off of one SCV, he didn't really get much out of that. And then back at home... Uh, lock. He's got the lockdown on this uh, Banshee right now with a Raven detection. Can he completely kill it off? Not just yet. Brings it down to pretty much nothing in terms of HP, but both players are doing a good job of kind of surviving some of this aggression at the moment. Getting that orbital command upgraded right now and ready to drop down. Meanwhile, a base is coming up behind for Lock 2 as well. Actually throwing down a third CC as well, so nice little uh, choice in terms of double expanding just because he's already going to have that later CC, so he's definitely going to need to have an opportunity to catch up uh, with that third one. I am curious to see. He's lifting up and down the barracks, and I'm waiting to see what that second structure is going to be, and there we go. So he is going to commit to mech from the looks of it, and... That means, at least for, in my opinion, while this Banshee gets into base and attacks a little bit, um, he's probably going to throw that third base down towards the gold. He'll get sensor towers, kind of zone out the whole area, and then just almost re reset up the game probably for the next few minutes until he can get out a nice little mix of a mech, mech army. And uh, I don't know how aware... Is, does AM Smooth see what, he, what he's building? I don't know. Can you check the vision? Yeah, I mean, if we take a look at AM Smooth's vision here... Uh, he's gotten a decent read on all the production. He hasn't seen a third CC, but he might be able to guesstimate that here just based on what else he's seen. But I do think Locke is going to have absolute air superiority with this Raven and these couple of Vikings. And he's just getting his tank count up back on the ground. He's going to lock himself in to really nicely defend three bases here. Uh, back on the other side of the map, that scout does get denied with a tank shell to the face. And uh, AM Smooth just trying to get his own infrastructure powered up, but he is going to be going bio off of two bases, and that kind of feels like an awkward spot unless he's going for a really specific timing because you don't want to be behind on bases when you're playing bio. Absolutely agree with you. I've been here way too many times in my life. I'm a, sacro I'm, I'm a religious bio player when it comes to Terran, especially in TBT, and so playing against a lot of players that tend to go mech nowadays, this is one of those areas where you have to get some damage done right now. You got a couple tanks, you have some bio forces out, you're getting some, hopefully some air, and you've got to put a little bit of pressure on. You got to poke, you got to check out what's going on because already by you know the eight, nine, ten minute mark, if you let a Terran player, especially a making Terran player, comfortably acquire the resources, acquire the gas, it's going to be very complicated for the bio player to find an option and room uh, to kind of get some aggression in. And, one more, I think it might be even the same Banshee right there with five kills, comes on in and uh, barely escapes? Yeah, it does look like it's going to... No. Oh, it needed a bit more micro, but uh, those anime starfighters and the Raven were able to catch up to it and shoot it down here. It does look like uh, Locke going to now be safely sitting on three bases, uh, starting to get that gold base saturated on up back on the other side of the map. AM Smooth still sitting on just two. He's got quite a bit of infrastructure out, and he is powering up that production, but he's not getting too much done with it, and Locke is just starting to steam ahead in that supply. He's also got a drop coming across the map, and uh, if he can start to pull his opponent apart here, he could find things go his way very quickly. 
this has a high potential for damage. A lot of the forces are outside of the natural at the current moment. He does have some turrets for defense, but if he could sneak it in that little hole, drop a few of those Hellions out, they could definitely run a bit of a muck inside the main base with 24 SCVs and not a lot of mineral patches available. A lot of those units are pretty much stacked. He's just going to go for it right now. They're just trying to drop out whatever he can possibly get. Gets three Hellions out. They do have Blue Flame. Here they come into the mineral line, and how much damage can he get done now? Two go down. Yeah, if he can get one more big wave off on those SCVs, he manages to get six. Yeah, a total of six SCVs are going to go down in that attack. Probably wanted to get a bit more done with that drop, but six is not bad, especially when you're a full base up on your opponent here. Uh, AM Smooth finally is adding on that third command center, but it's going to be a decent amount of time before it's landed and in position and upgraded to a normal command, and then finally starts producing those SCVs. So Locke securing himself a nice little early game lead here as we head into the mid game. And uh, I mean, the big thing I guess AM Smooth's got going for him is the fact that he's got these upgrades just cranking out really fast, but he's got to find something to do with him. His unit count is not that high. He hasn't been successful with drops. And uh, eventually if both players are just sitting and playing passive, Locke will catch up in those upgrades. Yeah, I mean, Locke, I think, in general, is still in a decent position. He's trying to run around with the Hellions to spot any more opportunities and openings. He's well aware that the third base is built, but is now just getting floated over to the location. Meanwhile, Scan goes to the other side of the map, and already he spots and sees uh, six factory, one starport production. You have mass mech already out on the map. You have defensive split really well uh, across all the bases. The gold base is getting mined heavily and almost a full saturation right now for the Terran player on the other side of the map. I will note, I do like this. One of the obviously vulnerabil vulnerabilities of mech is Doom Drops, and to deal with that, he's he got the uh, plus two auto turret upgrade for the turrets, so his natural is going to be pretty well defended. Those turrets are going to be able to get a few extra shots from distance. He obviously has enough units out over uh, the goal base where he doesn't have to worry about them, but here comes that big push, and I think there's going to be a little bit of a harsh reality for uh, Mr. Smooth here, as he's going to find out that uh, he might be tackling a little bit more, or might be biting off a little bit more than he can chew. Yeah, I mean, so the one bright spot here is if he can push into one of these locations, he can effectively isolate and try to remove that positional advantage that uh, Locke is trying to get from Mech here, especially because Locke is pushing out with a lot of those kind of buffer Hellbat units here. So can AM Smooth find a place that lets him crack this position? Two of the tanks currently unseaged. Locke scrambling to get some of these missile turrets up here, but AM Smooth not feeling comfortable trying to break in just yet. The longer this goes on, the more comfortable I feel Locke is going to get getting positioned. And yeah, now this engagement is going to take place with all the tanks perfectly pre-positioned and the air superiority of Locke allowed to have maximum effect. He, he scans and just like, well, there's a tank over here, there's tanks over there. And he's like, yeah, let's not mess with that. Let's just back on up a little bit. Um, finally, the third base back over on Smooth side is getting saturated, and here comes some of the blue flame hellions around the back. He does spot it, but there's only so much bio forces available. Oh, I didn't even see that widow mine. That's cute. Had it there for defense, so that will reduce some of the damage that he's taking, but he's got to be careful not to take too many shots. Loses five workers for six hellions. Not a terrible trade, but uh, still really um, the advantageous position is for Locke at the current moment. But as you mentioned, those upgrades are underway still. Plus three, plus two for the mech attack. Maybe, maybe if he can just get around, somehow get good position, or maybe just charge through, he could maybe find an opening. I don't know. My, my worry is, like, I look at his army and I see a lot of Marines. I don't see a lot of Marauders. I don't see a lot of air control. And so this is always going to be, I feel like, for Smooth until he can even this out, a tough position for him to try to consider taking engagements. Um, at this point, you would almost encourage him to back up, right? Yeah, I think you kind of have to, but you're between a rock and a hard place sometimes when you're in this situation. Smooth feeling he has to do damage right now. Actually going to split off a portion of his army, try to make something happen at the third of his opponent, but plenty of tanks in place to receive him. And actually, uh, Smooth kind of gave up the only advantage. He might have the ability to crack one of these two split armies in half by having his army completely joined up together. He is now going to back off. But you don't want to be down in supply when you're the bio player running home with your tail between your legs. This is looking very advantageous for our Red Terran player, Locke. And I think he's got a good chance to lead his team to a 2-0 lead here. Yeah, and while, you know, Smooth is not, you know, per se playing wrong in any way, Locke is just making the better decisions. He's finding these run buys, he's finding these openings, 
he's doing uh, the right harassment, the right drops, and kind of for the defensive purposes, he's got a nice like matrix of units spread out um, across his whole, all of his bases and stuff. He's just stabilizing himself. He's creating a great economy while also uh, getting a little bit of harass done, just to gain those little tiny advantages here and there. And really, I'm hoping for smooth. He adds on there we go that other starport. That way, he could actually begin ramping up some of the air production because that might be the opening that he's could look for. If he could gain the air superiority, get battle cruisers out. Get a couple liberators, some more Vikings. Maybe he can turn the tide because honestly, after seeing, I mean, after after living through like eight years of StarCraft two, well, what, once you're behind on the ground this hard, it's going to be really hard to fight back on the ground. So I think air might be his better option, and he's getting that air upgrade as well too. Yeah, I mean, with the spell casting from the Ravens, it can certainly be more vo uh, volatile in the air, and maybe that could go in his favor uh, when you're down seventy supply. A bit of volatility. Uh, might be what you're hoping for, but he is going to be looking to maybe take this fight, catch some of these tanks on siege. They do have time to retreat back, set up. Uh, he's buying himself time at least, right? He does have yep. that Yamato cannon on the way. Every siege he can force out is good. That's more precious seconds until his super, super valuable mineral lines start getting rained down here. Uh, Smooth does have a bit of a bank, so he can maybe survive off that in terms of minerals, but he is so gas-starved, and if tanks oh, get sieged days. up on top of this, it's going to be very painful for him. Yeah, he's going to be split in two areas. He's got the gold base under attack with a blue flame aliens, and meanwhile, getting assaulted over here at the third base with a siege up in the air superiority, and I, uh, it's, it's a shame. I think this is GG, but... It's like, I, I was about to have, like, one of those, like, that meme, the longest yeah boy ever, if he could just stall out and get a lot of air out, because it is kind of fun to watch the uh, some of the Yamato battles happen when they do, but, yeah, at this point, just with a lacking economic base for him to work with, obviously, his mains practically mined out, the gas is gone, Natural's going to be soon falling in that, so he's pretty much down to one and a half bases, if you include uh, the few little bit of workers and mules down at the gold base, so at this point... Really, it's just for Log just to continue to scan, control, and position himself properly and not lose the advantage that he's got currently. All of that is true, but there is six but, battle cruisers. And, the, uh, there, there's five uh, battle cruisers, rather. And if he can win an air fight and he has battle cruisers, all those tanks are forfeit. Suddenly, maybe something crazy can start to happen. Those anti armor missiles are going to come down. It's a potent force here. And uh, those battle cruisers taking huge amounts of damage. The Vikings making short work of them. A couple Vikings of his own coming up from behind. It looks like uh, AM Smooth may have enough to win the fight. Even Mules coming down to repair these damaged capital ships. And this is quite an impressive hold from him. If he can take out these Vikings, those siege tanks are going to be so, so vulnerable here. And it looks like he's actually going to be able to rain down from above. Lock either needs to reinforce or get the hell out of there. Um... It's important that AM Smooth recognizes this is happening and, you know, jumps on these super expensive free units before they get out of there. Yeah, he's got a small opportunity in front of him. Looks like the tanks will get pulled back in time, but at the same time, if you're locked, I think you're maybe okay with losing those as well. As you're transitioning more into air too as well, you might almost want a little bit more of that open supply because he's already got a really healthy ground force as it is at the current moment, but we'll, we'll see here. He's also throwing up his mech, plus three. He's getting his uh, mech armor that will affect the air as well, for those that are unfamiliar and just tuning in from StarCraft II, if you're <laughs> just coming from 2011 or 2012 by chance, um, mech upgrades are combined for air on the defensive side. So your air and your ground is taken care of. But I like this little cute push, uh, almost like these mobile little <laughs> tanks acting like Hellions, gonna harass these bases on the side while the rest of the air back at home builds up. Yeah, he is nice going to use that battlecruiser teleport to get above the tanks here, and uh, eventually these tanks are all going to get cleaned up. The problem is Locke is doing a really good job of multitasking. He's got a blue flame heli and run by cleaning things up in the northwest corner of uh, AM Smooth's base here. These tanks are going to go home. The battlecruisers will be in pursuit, but back at home, Locke has more anti-air getting out, getting prepared to meet him. He's got a lot of turrets. He's starting to get up battle cruisers of his own and he has quite the viking cloud to deal with the air army of his opponent yeah it's interesting you, you look at the you look at the unit count right now as you mentioned only two battle cruisers one raven and one liberator meanwhile you're you've got four four uh, battle cruisers and nine vikings over on the side of uh, our blue terran and smooth 
and he's got a lot of resources. He's got about 3,000 resources. He could obviously build up a, a good amount of supply and a command center to re, uh, redistribute his bases once again, get another healthy force out. He obviously needs to as well throw some of those SCVs back on gas. That's really the one thing he's lacking in terms of his resource collection. He's got that opportunity in front of him, but I don't know if he's noticed it just yet. Meanwhile, I guess uh, who cares when he can actually take out 10 workers of your opponent at the same time, but there's a lot of like... <laughs> <laughs> A lot of mules do come down here saying get out of this game. GG is called and Locke takes the second game despite I'm going to say some cool play from AM Smooth. I liked seeing the Hail Mary Battle Cruiser play. That was a lot of fun to watch. It's a, it's a great re it's a, it's a great reaction because I think that's only the really only reaction you have to give yourself a chance. So he made the right read but was unfortunately just I feel like a little bit too far behind in terms of the economic difference in the buildup as you mentioned that uh, kind of at the start of the game where he started falling behind three base to two base that's not the position where you want to find yourself against a mech player uh, in a tvt so uh congrats to waterloo 2-0 lead right now at the moment they have an opportunity now to lock it up if they can uh, take another victory in the 2v2 but uh we'll have to watch and see man uh, this could be this could be fun yeah so don't go anywhere we'll be right back with that 2v2 match She said, trust me, these are the stories we will tell as I stood frozen. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to our CSL 
we are getting into our 2v2 here. Uh, this is actually going to be match point between UC Riverside and Waterloo. Uh, if Waterloo can take this one, they're going to close the series out. And I would say, just based on looking at the composition of their teams, they're in a terrific position to try to make something happen here. Indeed. Uh, AM Smooth and Bust are only 1-3 in three on the season currently at the moment. And versus uh, Terran and Protoss, they haven't played yet. So this is going to be the first time they face off in that 2v2 matchup. Meanwhile, um, on the side of Genfu and uh, Buster, you have a one and one record. They placed twice together this season. And versus uh, Terran and Zerg, they have not played it against them either. So both, for both teams, a fresh matchup in the 2v2 that we're seeing. Well, we are spawning into Shrines of Lizul. So here in the bottom left-hand corner, playing for UC Riverside. This team has to make it happen right here, right now, if they want their hope in this series to continue. It is AM Smooth and Bust. Mr. Bust. Now, um, they've had a bit of a shorter roster over the season for UC Riverside. Kind of interesting um, looking at them. They've had a player by the name of Darth Dater. <laughs> <laughs> they added in during the spring, but he is nowhere to be seen uh, for the playoff roster at the current moment. So a lot of this has to come down now to Bus and AM Smooth to make things happen. But, but let's, uh, let's introduce the Waterloo side too as well. Let's not forget about those guys. Yeah, spawning here in the top right-hand corner, it is the Blue Terran Buster and his red Protoss teammate, Yen Fu. Mr. Yen Fu. Uh, they have each uh, had really good 1v1 records, though. Uh, their 2v2 only extended to two games during the season. So, uh, as we mentioned, Buster 5-2, and two, actually now 6-2 and two on the season, and uh, Yenfu is 2-1 as a Protoss as well. So both reaping those positive records currently in the CSL. But uh, this, this map is interesting, to say the least. Uh, we've seen a lot of 2v2s happen on this game, and it's really either you sit back, and try to do your best to macro and anticipate aggression, or you're the aggressor. As we, what was it uh, last week? <laughs> was it last week on Thursday where we see the double proxy uh, Stargate? Or yeah, it was just the double proxy Stargate uh, matchup. It was just really funny to see some of the goofy builds that come out on this map. Yeah, I mean, what else uh, are you gonna do on a map where, as we love to kind of point out, your rush distance is not significantly longer between that of the distance between your base and your allies so it can actually be really hard on this map to reinforce your ally especially if they get a two person punch right to their throat uh, because of that you tend to see a lot of builds that can kind of go back and forth between being hyper aggressive or just being a safe defensive build it needs the flexibility on this match here and actually can you catch this reaper super nice out of yen fu a uh, great way to deny your opponent info when, um, oh, actually, uh, he, he, he sees him smooth, sees the Buster Reapers, and he's trying to get his own defensive Reapers up. Both players decided to play off of a three racks playstyle, and so this is all really going to be about who can get up, out enough Reapers and trade well enough, and really kind of scary moment for smooth right here, because if he gives up any advantage whatsoever or positional uh, spot and he ends up losing it, this could be really bad. Fortunately, though, he does get help from Bust with some of the uh, speedlings and roaches that just came out and pushed him out of the way. Um, though behind this, you do see an additional three racks or double racks, and this is going to be going up to five racks reaper. And this is just going to be really a game that all revolves around Buster. If he can make a lot of damage, or if he can do a lot of damage with these reapers and just sneak by a lot of these uh, slower moving units, he can get so much damage done. Even on him by himself, he can almost defend all of this too. This is just really scary. And it's funny, right behind this, Yenfu is just calmly <laughs> building up stalkers and uh, getting some adepts out. Yeah, Buster is trying to make something happen. This is a Ravager Roach heavy army, so it is a bit tough for him to engage with all of these Reapers here. Those bombs going to help clear up some space, and it does look like they're going to get up to that high ground here. But this is kind of a weird spot. Now that the Void Ray's out, things do get a bit easier for uh, Waterloo here. Those roaches and the Ravagers are the scary bit. Once that's out of the way, Buster can take care of business with the rest of this army. 
Yeah, that void ray doing a great job of uh, focusing down the Ravager specifically to try to get them as a, obviously it's one of the only threats out on the map to a void ray, but um, it's also making the army of uh, just generally all the units of UC Riverside move around inconsistently and making it very hard to micro as you see just consistently bouncing between those grenades trying to deal some damage or position themselves so while this is happening they're beginning to lose a lot of units and look at the amount of reapers that buster has one jump on this cliff up here and i think that's going to be almost all the economy gone right here and i think he's going for it right now making the right decision right here this is exactly what i would do too as well yeah at the same time there's even an oracle of yenfu swinging to the base of am smooth taking oh. care of business oh. over there and these guys are just pulling their opponents apart waterloo doing really well here if he can pin these armies up i think he can just fight this yeah. straight up with the reapers i mean this is a stupid amount of reapers but, well, it's like uh, you, you don't you don't want to risk you don't want to be like hey go like attack move the roaches but yeah i think you're right i think there's just enough damage that they could deal and i think he's realizing it right now he throws down the manor <laughs> throws down the manor meal come on water what are you doing guys uh, sometimes that can make your opponent fight harder it does look like am smooth comes up but yeah. bust and am smooth call gg Waterloo takes a very clean 3-0 and moves on to the round of eight in absolutely dominant fashion. This was the risk. This was the risk they took. They put Intense in the four slot, and uh, by doing so, they limited their ability to win in the first three sets in one way or another. Honestly, if I had to redo the lineup for UC Riverside, I'd probably put them in the first slot, and then figured out a way to put him in the 2v2 as well. Obviously, Intense is probably their ace player, but... It doesn't matter if you about the ace if you can't get to the ace and so this is a good lesson i feel like for all starcraft 2 teams that are trying to figure out how to set up their lineups for the playoffs and trying to maybe get a little funky a little unpredictable um trying to you know predict some of the matchups you don't risk it just you know get your best lineup out early and then do what you can if you get to the fourth if you get to the ace match fine like deal with that then don't, don't risk it uh, via the matchup lines. But overall, a good play by Waterloo, though, today, right? I mean, they did what they were supposed to do. They kind of came in and did what we expected them to do, too, as well. Um, obviously, a really great defense in the first match um, with AM Smooth, uh, or not, sorry, uh, Happy Tofu with that all-in on Roach is really nice defense from the Terran side of Buster. Then we saw... Um, what was our second game? <laughs> what was our second game? We just watched it. Lock versus AM Smooth, a little bit of a TVT action, and... Uh, Locke obviously did a wonderful job of building up the economy, getting the mech army out, controlling the map, getting harassment done, and slowly whittled down the capabilities of Smooth. Almost was able to get that cute little air army out. We were, kind of, were getting a little bit excited over that. And then uh, eventually, once he fell to 2v2 that we just watched and saw, Buster, Yenfu, take care of business, great control, great unit comps, um, and they dealt and did what they needed to do. So Waterloo. Uh, living up to expectations. Moving on to the round of eight, they will be facing off against, if I'm not mistaken, our, is it our match that's going to be on Thursday? Should be. Yeah, next matchup going to be on Thursday. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we definitely appreciate you guys stopping by. Thank you to our sponsors, Twitch. Uh, make sure to use that command Discord to hop on into the Discord. Uh, help you start finding a team for next season, maybe. And until Thursday, uh, see, uh, which will be uh, UC San Diego versus Simon Fraser. All right, so UC uh, UC San Diego versus Simon Th Fraser will be Thursday. And until then, or rather, we will see you then. Adios. It's cool.